Um, the, the first slide you'll see is the US 89 slide investigation status. Um, the slide occurred February 20th, about 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, we initiated an incident command uh, with the Navajo Nation on February 27th, where our FEMA and also our um, EOC was established within the Division of Transportation. Um, the investigation and currently the geotechnical investigation is going on. Um, I believe they, well, ADOT is currently on site. Uh, they have several equipment on site to do some testing to see um, what potentially may be. Uh, what potentially was the cause and then the extent of uh, the slide itself. Federal Highway basically authorized a quick release of funds in the amount of $2 million. Um, again, at the next slide you'll see that the geotechnical investigation of US-89 is ongoing. Um, we also, ADOT also has a, a first responder access to 89 now so that we can have emergency um, vehicles, and also, I believe, if I'm wrong, Dallas, is that also um, school buses? No? Not at this time. Not at this time, so it will just be basically the first responders. Um, there's an access road um, along the road for that purpose. Um, to, we're anticipating, ADOT is anticipating a paving in 20 as an interview by summer of 2013. And then they are also going to identify and implement the ultimate repair of US-89. Um, the, the next slide is, is very critical in our report, and Chair, and remember it, it, is, it is that uh, for N-20, uh, Federal Highway is using the emergency relief funding. And there are certain criteria under in, the N-20 detour. Federal Highway is the lead agency and ADOT is the technical agency, which means this fund is coming from the Federal Highway Administration. Federal Highway has authorized emergency relief funding basically to get a detour in place as soon as possible to restore essential traffic. That's what the purpose of these funds are for. Um, no Federal Highway Administration emergency relief funding can be used to construct new improvements. And we'll discuss that further in our PowerPoint as to um, as to what our concerns are from the Bureau and also from the Navajo Nation with respect to the new construction that's going to go on. Emergency funding is limit, limited in its use. And emergency funding may cover periodic maintenance during the use of the detour. Um, Federal Highway does not know how much US-89 repairs are going to cost. Madam uh, Chair, if there's any point that the committee wishes to answer the question, we'd be more than happy to answer those. Um, and then the next slide, uh, the next PowerPoint is um, pay existing in 20 for an interim detour by summer of 2013. The objective is to, again, to restore essential traffic as soon as possible. And the anticipated detour duration is approximately two years. Um, but we can't determine that until we paid up and also Federal Highway determines how long 89 will take to reconstruct the road. The detour length is approximately 45 miles. And that 45 miles includes 28 miles of dirt road. And that's the, um, the road that currently we are in. in in the process of um, repaving. And then the scope is to pay the, at the existing alignment with limited drainage improvements, and it's not the ultimate improvement that's uh, currently within the BIA uh, the TIP program. The detour cost will be 15 to $20 million. Currently, there is no easement on N20. And as our discussion from yesterday with ADOT, Federal Highway, and BIA, um, ADOT will apply for a temporary easement along N20 for the purpose of uh, constructing N20. ADOT also will is to amend existing the 2006 environmental assessment. 
Um, currently, ADOT has selected a design consultant. We are going to be working with a design consultant um, from here on out um, on total rebuild construction. ADOT is to select a contractor the week of the second week in April. And we'll go on to the next slide. Again, the anticipated detour duration is two years. The design will call for following the existing alignment on N20. And we will um, and then there will be minimal drainage improvements such as culverts and such as box culverts. Those are the um, drainage that, um, issues that we had a concern with. But when you go back to the intent of the program of funding is basically to only to allow for a temporary detour currently to go around the map. Pavement is designed for heavy traffic and design speeds uh, will be reduced to follow the existing alignment. The next slide, uh, we will have left turn lanes at N21, N6210, N201 and N6211. Currently, there is no provision for fencing. Again, this is one of those issues we have addressed with Federal Highway and ADOT. Because of the funding source and the timeline, um, those provisions are not allowed under the Federal Highway Administration to receive the funding. There is no plans to construct the PIA's ultimate N20 design. When we talk about it, the ultimate design, it's basically calling for about 60 to 80 million dollars to read um, to do the ultimate design on N20. That is not going to be, that's not going to happen with this with this uh, project. For a quick construction turnaround time, ADOT will pursue construction managers at this. Go to the next slide. Navajo Nation BIA concerns with Navajo Nation and our and BIA's concerns with paving of N20. We had numerous and lengthy discussions with BI, uh, with Federal Highway and ADOT on these concerns. One of the concerns that we have is design speed. Now, when you go into design of uh, the ultimate, um, the design speed uh, basically will, ADOT and Federal Highway will try to address those with the existing alignment. Drainage is another issue. We won't have a lot of the drainage structures in there. Some of these will not have like, you know, box culverts or, uh, or even uh, culvert installation. There's going to be ultimately a heavy traffic volume. Currently, um, our ADT average daily traffic currently is at about 50. We put some ADT counters there couple of weeks ago and I think it went to 500 ADT. So when we put a pay new pavement in, that ultimately would probably go to 1,500 to 2,000 ADT per day. So it will increase the traffic. And we also have concern with open range uh, as far as fencing the whole, the whole length of the project. Again, those are issues that Federal Highway and ADOT, especially Federal Highway, will not pay for because this is basically a temporary detour route that they are paying for. There are safety and liability issues, and there are maintenance issues once this road is built. Uh, the road will be turned back over to the Bureau and to the nation for maintenance purposes, and those are some of our concerns. And there's also um, temporary easement requirements, which we had discussed yesterday in our meeting. Again, as I indicated, there is no official right-of-way for N20. So we are now in the process of um, working a temporary um, construction easement for this project. There's also jurisdictional and liability issues which we were, are working through currently right now. And we should be able to iron those issues out within the next few days. Um, also, on the next slide, we also have cultural and environmental requirements. Uh, we have, and currently we are working with the Department of Justice to 
do an agreement between the Navajo Nation BIA and ADOC. And also, we are currently going to run those through the signature review process. We will require RDC approval for the temporary easement. Um, and then also, Navajo preference on hiring for construction is another issue that we're going to address in before uh, construction starts. We'll go into schedule for paving of N20. Uh, the next slide, Daryl. We have ADOC that will select a design consultant, which I believe we already have on board as of March 22nd. We will have a request for survey, and that we will ask through the normal process through the President's office to sign an emergency declaration uh, so that the, the permission for request for survey can be granted. Um, that will be between March 25th and March 29th. We will have a notice to proceed for sur survey by April 1st. Once the survey is completed, ADOC will submit a scoping report that outlines what um, their construction will entail by April 1st. Archaeology Environmental will be meeting from April 1st to April 22nd to ensure that all the documentations are in place so that when the SAS document hits their offices, they're well aware of what they need to do so they can sign immediately uh, where they need to and within that, also within that time frame they'll give them the opportunity to, to uh, make any changes that they want to bring forward uh, on this uh, archaeological environmental documentation. Once all that is packaged along with the survey information, ADOC will then submit an easement package to the Navajo Nation on April 22nd. We will have the President and uh, issue a directive to have all the SAS reviewers meet and approve this package on April 23rd. There will be a five-day public review comment once it goes across to the Legislative Council between April 24th and April 29th. We will request the RDC action on the easement on April 30th. The contractor will then mobilize on site May 1st, and then and then in 20 detour opens for traffic summer of 2013. That's the schedule that we've outlined for uh, the schedule for paving in 20. So, uh, Madam Chair. Um, that's what we have as far as our, um, our briefing for the committee. And again, I do have uh, ADOC state engineer here, as well as the BIA, uh, Mr. Roland Vicente, the uh, regional roads director, for any clarifications or questions, Madam Chair. This report that was made this morning, a head edition for the final has no idea. It's an emergency situation, I know. I know um, the Usually it takes forever. Like the Athene, there's a lot of process that we go through all these paperwork. And uh, in one or two years later, in the, we see the construction. Summertime in the there's a lot of delays in between whether the object in the Obama's case or that's a now it is a nice kind of should they auto um abonnate the the paperwork that coin. And now our land is here. I'm sure it's by the no care of the two five and the branches. These are not all in so. And there was a seed on the care. So the, the only thing they want to get is just a construction easement, the Abijan dog for them. Just an easement to do the work in there. The other one I have a question on is according to what you gave us. Uh, there's a lot of them, they can uh, up to 20 million call 
what assurance can anybody have or give that the the, the land is the land has stopped shifting? So those were the questions and concerns that um, I guess some of my 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 people in Western Agency have posed also. So. Um, and I have a big problem with the request from NDOT for use of FT, FET. Our community members throughout the nation are already, already asking us to, um, to, to have access at those on a fair, fair basis. Perhaps the thing to do would be to ask the state of Arizona to return the four million dollars a year that we give to them back for this purpose. I think that is the fair, fair way to, to um, access those funds. Navajo Nation only actually gets three million dollars. The state of Arizona gets four million dollars on an annual basis. So why, why not dig into their pockets? And then finally, I will not, this is on a personal basis, I will not stand in support of any contract, emergency or not, if you will not use Navajo labor. Navajo, our own Navajo people to help build this road. Time and time again, people, contractors, lead agencies, what have you, promise, sit here and promise that they will use our people. They turn around and contract that out to suppose expertise. And those contractors, subcontractors, will not put our people to work. Our people build bridges, build big cities throughout the United States. Yet, and here on the Navajo Nation, they are forbidden from being put to work. So, this is not a short thing, emergency or not. Thank you. The question with regards to the, the construction easement, it would only be that um, the council delegate Pete is that it would be a temporary construction easement given not by the nation but by the Bureau of Indian Affairs to ADOT to construct his point. The construction easement will have to go through the whole uh, process of uh, giving uh, permission from the nation, issuing from that building. Again, uh, as I indicated in my previous slides, that we will be uh, compiling the, the um, survey, the survey plats. We currently have existing environmental documentation. And then along with the President's signature authority for consents, we will give that construction, temporary construction easement to the committee for their approval. Uh, again, in my presentation earlier, there are timelines that we proposed. Uh, for this temporary construction easement. Once that construction is done, then the road will be given back to the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Um, and then at that point, then there will be right away that will be um, granted back for that road project. The day with that, um, Council Delegate Pete. Uh, also had some other questions. Uh, with regards to uh, the use of fuel excise tax. Those are just the issues that uh, internally we discuss with the Bureau and the Navajo Nation. Again, when you take a look at fencing, there are no funding for fencing for this project. And then when you take a look at the purpose, again, when you take a look at the purpose of Federal Highway Emergency Relief funding, there's criteria. It's only for a detour to get essential traffic back. Basically what Federal Highway 
can also do, Madam Chair and members of the committee, is that they already have a detour route right now. And that's going from Tuba City to Kaibato and back to Page. That's their detour right now. Uh, they can actually say that's their detour route and not even address in 20 at this point. But they've uh, chosen to work with ADA to potentially have this detour route. Federal Highway Administration Emergency Relief Funding is only for to you for the detour, there's no new construction improvements on that road. There's, they don't have funding for that purpose. And it's limited in its use. So that's basically the whole process behind N20. That they've identified this as an emergency relief route and they are proposing to um, um, uh, release funding for that amount. <coughs> Now, there was a question with regards to the $2 million. Uh, I will have to defer uh, that question to ADOT because they're more familiar. There's also a question with regards to the $1 million that was recently allocated from the Arizona Transportation Board. Those questions I'll, I'll defer to ADOT to address. Now, to also address the question with regards to moving N20 up on the priority list, Again, those are discussions that we had internally with the Bureau and, and our division to see if there may be potential to include fencing as part of this project to supplement the nation's share from this project. Bear in mind that we did also meet yesterday with ADA and we made um, Bureau of Affairs made a request to ADA to use ADOT funds to supplement the fencing project. And our discussion from that meeting was that they will look and potentially have the transportation board take a look at that and with their approval, ADOT may potentially use some of their funds for the fencing project. When you take a look at the road project, again, we have other numerous concerns, which is drainage. Uh, we asked the question of, can you elevate and according to what the BIA design standards are to elevate the road to provide drainage for the road. Again, when you take a look at the emergency relief funds, there are no provisions for improvement of that type. If we were to move forward with asking ADA to go with drainage, then you're, then you're looking at a longer construction time frame. Instead of this being an emergency and just to restore essential traffic, that's not going to be the case. It's basically be new, new construction and in the eyes of Federal Highway, that would deem be not allowable. So we need to start making continuous improvements on this road and requesting continuous improvement on the road. It just further makes it a more of a new construction. For instance, if you are going to build up the road according to provide grade and drain, you're looking at more dollars and more construction time to do that kind of work. You're looking at more time to do box culverts. You're looking at more time to put, install culverts. Those are time that you're moving the construction instead of the July date all the way to next year. And when that happens, it's not a temporary uh, detour route. So that's what we have, um, Madam Chair. I guess the question came up uh, about how long it's going to take uh, to get the construction completed. Uh, primarily, we feel yesterday we met, we had a, a, a good technical meeting yesterday with ADOT, now with DOT, and, and BIA. Uh, we talked about a number of things. Uh, as you may know, um, ADOT or BIA has been involved in uh, improving that 27 miles of road. Uh, we had three phases of construction projects uh, that we've been working on for a number of years. Um, and we're pretty close to getting the construction done. The construction plans are done, but we're, we're doing the uh, environmental work, uh, and namely uh, art clearance uh, for one section. But uh, a lot of that work is being used in the detour. So what ADOT has to work with is a lot of the art work that's been completed. Environmental documents are available. We shared all our information with them. We have our plans we provided to them. And a lot of survey work has been done. 
So um, to get the um, easement, it's really, it's, I wouldn't consider it a construction easement. I, I would consider it a temporary easement. And the only difference between this easement and the normal easement that we would obtain, like from the BIA, is that the term limits is like two years. It would be agreed upon by the nation, however long that term limit would be. At this point, we're looking at two years because the T4 has been, uh, it's, it's, it's been said that uh, it's going to take two years. So um, with that, I, I think uh, if we can, you know, the, the easement will be for design, construction, maintenance, and operation of um, the detour for about two years. So that's what we're looking at. Um, it, I, I really think uh, the schedule that was provided, April 22nd, is a realistic date to go get that easement in place. And uh, so shortly thereafter, ADOT is ready with their contractor, they can begin the work. And it is going to be a big undertaking to get that work done. 28 miles of pavement and ABC and all that stuff. It's going to take a lot of work to get it done, but uh, with uh, the schedule they have in mind, they'll have it done before the end of the summer. So it looks good from that standpoint, and we're supportive with ADOT, of course, in, in Navajo. Um, other questions were brought out, I guess, <coughs> is the livestock concerns. I think uh, BIA, are, we have reasons to believe that um, once we have, we put truck traffic and, and make classify the A20 as a detour road, once improvements are made, I, I think we're going to have a lot of traffic. And we think that a lot of traffic is going to, is, is there to stay. It's not going to go away once the detour is over. And so we're concerned, I, we don't want to stop the project, but we're concerned with livestock. We're also concerned with the drainage, uh, that they can't provide the drainage provisions, installing culverts and that kind of stuff. And so uh, we're working with ADOT, we, we let them know what our concerns are, uh, because once the detour is over, uh, that, that facility will be turned over to BIA, and we will be stuck with uh, safety issues on that route, uh, safety issues involved, involving drainage, and of course livestock. So we are actively looking for ways to make those improvements. Um, maybe as supplemental funding, maybe as supplemental project to, put, um, to address those drainage concerns and obviously the livestock, it's a big concern. Um, in the preliminary engineering stages for our project, um, the communities had requested us to install fencing and so on and so forth. So, and that's what we're impressing upon ADOT, that um, those are concerns from the uh, chapter level. And, and hopefully we'll address that soon, but not later. Um, because we feel like there's going to be traffic in the order of 15 to 1,500 to 2,000 vehicles a day. And when the detour is over, it's, it's going to still be there. So thank you. Mr. Vice Chair, um, to address a couple of the questions. The first, I, I wanted to address the, um, the Madam Chair's um, question, how we communicated with the locals. Um, we have set up a ADOT communications person in the area. They, they have an office in Page, but they're also at least one day a week traveling the area meeting with the, the chapters. Um, we do have a, I got an email last night, a chapter meeting with the Bottleway Gap April 1st that we will be going to meet with um, their members and, and, and address. We've also in a technical meeting met with um, a couple of the chapters and are, have been a part of our technical meetings. We are available, um, we're learning the process and um, we could have been out in front of areas um, sooner but we are available to meet at any chapter meeting that the community has. And not just a PR person, senior staff will be there. Myself as a senior deputy state engineer, or the state engineer at that level will be at those chapter meetings to um, address the concerns of the folks there. We also, in the communications area, are um, putting out information um, flyers. Those will be printed both in English and we're working with a, um, a linguist where that can um, translate that into Navajo. We've also hired a, a person for our, through a consultant to assist our staff that is um, 
a, a Nav Navajo speaker that can go out and communicate to, to the public. Another question, um, Mr. Vice Chair, was are we going to use um, Navajo labor? That is definitely um, will be a part of the contract. And in, um, in the presentation, it was mentioned that ADOT is using a contract manager at risk. The area where I like this method is we get to select a contractor based on qualifications. And part of that evaluation can be where are they going to get their labor force. We already have one talking to us that has worked exten ex extensively in the Navajo Nation, has foreman that in key um, areas that are members of your community, that will help them in that submittal. This is unlike most of the work we do. We take who's the cheapest, the low bid. In this case, we're going to use who's the most qualified for two reasons. One, what they, what, how fast they can get the work done and the quality that they can do. And part of that quality is using um, local folks in your area. Questions on the safety, the fencing. As was stated um, by Director Chaco, FHWA, um, the emergency funds would not allow fencing the, the total length. They did say, though, we could look for opportunities to fence isolated areas where we know cattle are. I don't know if that will solve the issue. We also discussed with them after our meeting last night while I was driving back on the phone, is there an opportunity to put water lines in? We know there's stock tanks on one side of the road, livestock move from one side to the other. Can we look, and I know in um, VI's plan they look to have watering tanks on both sides. They felt that would be a acceptable cost to add that to the project. In addition, um, like Director Chaco said, myself and others at ADOT are looking for opportunities for adding fencing. I have asked our um, safety people to look at, can we use our um, highway enhancements for safety funds to put fencing either in total or in parts of those areas. So right now I do not have the funding available to do it, but I am looking very hard, where can we get that funding? The question was how fast can we do the work? We're committed to, as soon as we have all the permits in place, we will have paving done between 60 and 90 days. Part of our selection of that contractor will be how fast they can do the work. We will look for opportunities if that contractor teams with someone else that they can put two paving spreads out there so they can get the work done um, that much faster. Are there any other questions, Mr. Vice Chair? We managed to scroll the screen the bottom of the bell for 12 minutes through fuel excise tax. Out of that 12 million off the top, we give the state of Arizona 4 million, a third of what we managed to gather in. There shouldn't be any problem for the state of Arizona to cover this, eight of to cover this. Hello. The deal of the meal is high, but I will eat. Now, get that at the meal inside the cloth of all and it's like the grandmother's money, the welfare, social security, whatever. We barely, barely raised 12 million. And off that we give you four million. In a time like this one, in the state of emergency, they shouldn't have any problem responding to our needs. Glad to have that document. Okay, I want to ask us on the I think I don't saw the car store was it. Twenty is the north, we did our one car to the middle of the day. Uh, I think we need to make ourselves available to the uh, group to push us in the city hall and shit. That's not these kids, no. We need to get together and talk with them and talk things through <coughs> to expedite this project as fast as possible. See what we can do. They can't be waiting for our weekly meeting. But I just want to finish this. I'm not just trying to do it.
I agree that we need to meet with them. This committee needs to meet with them. And maybe the council, the full council, needs to meet with um, ADOT, BIA, and NDOT, President Shelley. I thought that was scheduled yesterday. I received a notice by Myra Rothman, Delgit Smith and I. So yesterday I rushed to Holbrook. Just this side of um, Hopi Travel Center, I get a new email informing me that I didn't need to be there and it was just for technical, it was just for engineers. It sounded like I was not welcome. I really debated whether I should just barge in <laughs> or, or um, respect the, the note of um, this welcome. So I chose the latter and I stayed out. And my trip to Holbrook was, was all for naught. But maybe I'm seeing the big picture. Maybe there's a reason for keeping the council up, the elected officials. I want to remind the state and the BIA and everybody that we represent the people. We need to hear the voice of the people and respect the voice of the people, and including federal highway. And um, we need to be at the table. Also, I have a question. I'm aware that President Obama set aside certain emergency funds, federal emergency funds for Native American. Are these funds coming from that? Maybe the council needs to go directly to Obama and ask why the proposed roads are half shoddy. Already, why aren't our drainage included? Why aren't maybe turnoff included? We know these are not going to be temporary roads. These are going to be forever roads. I don't see once a semi truck driver passes through this flat area turning around and going down that steep hill anymore. I don't see them trying to travel the same old route again. I don't. So these are not temporaries for, for our people here. And I represent Western Agency, so I'm, I'm a little furious with what's going on here. Emergency or not, there needs to be some, some consideration for our people. And I was very, very angry when I heard that people in Kanab and, and Richfield and Page and, where was it, Fredonia were notified. They were notified, informed, and were given apology letters from Federal Highway and State Highway that now their lives are going to be interrupted, their economy is going to be interrupted. Yet that same consideration wasn't afforded my people. That's wrong. Thank you, Mr. Vice. When we first uh, entered into working with N20 project, both BIA and Navajo Nation, uh, we're walking a fine line in the development of N20. First thing is that, again, it's a temporary detour route to address 89. And there is currently a temporary detour route right now. And if Federal Highway so chooses, they can not include N20 as their detour route. Uh, with all of the concerns that we have on this road, you know, we can ask for the ultimate on these road, on this road project. The ultimate is cost $80 million. And that's what the BIA is, is forced to, to deal with 
along with the Navajo Nation, to complete this road project. And it's $80 million. And we're walking a fine line as far as how we use these federal highway dollars, which is the temporary, the, the federal highway dollars for emergency relief. And there's criteria under Federal Highway Administration we deal with as well. <coughs> and both BIA and NDOT are trying to find some common ground to address a lot of these issues. Now, the other question that arose or is being has been posed is uh, when do we meet uh, as far as the committee is concerned and as you see on the board there ADOT is the contractor they've already selected a consultant they're doing the design right now ADOT will then construct a road project what we have from the Bureau of Indian Affairs and NDOT and the Navajo Nation is that we will have to run the temporary easement through for ADOP. And that's where the council and that's where the president is involved in trying to expedite that process right there. That's the only document that is needed in order for construction to commence on May 1st. Again, when we take a look at the design, the design will include some of our concerns from the Navajo Nation and BIA with regards to uh, passing lanes uh, as far as bus turnarounds, as far as some of the drainage that we potentially may encounter. So those are the things that we're waiting for from the BIA, from ADOP at this point to submit a scoping report to us by April 1st so they can, so our engineers from the Bureau of Indian Affairs our technical arm from, from the nation will have a chance to look at that and we'll sit back down with them and discuss that scoping report as far as what is required in the design. Those are the decisions that I guess right now is the we're going to present our recommendation after the scoping meeting to the, to the Navajo Nation Council and to RDC as to how to proceed if we ask for the ultimate Federal Highway will not do the ultimate at this point. We were, we were informed that immediately already. So, Madam Chair, again, we are um, at the point where um, the decision was made to go ahead and do the project. You see in the newspaper the decision has been made and saying that paving will be done on in 20. People are expecting that this road is going to be paved. Now, if we belabor the issue on some of the issues that we're discussing here, Potentially, Federal Highway and ADAP might just walk away from the project, which is going to be even more detriment to those community members, and we're going to ask them why this happened. So, again, Madam Chair, I hope you and Vice Chair and members of the committee just appreciate what the situation we're in as far as trying to move this project forward. Uh, and then, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and give it over to ADOP to respond back to the funding level and also to the FEMA question as with, with, request, with response to um, the one million that was allocated recently, the two million that's, that the governor uh, released or the Federal Highway released and the total project cost, potential pro total project cost based on the scope and report. Uh, Vice Chair. I apologize, I, I did leave out that um, response. On the um, two million dollars, FHWA has recognized the US 89 as an emergency project. They have a program where a state can request a quick release, basically a down payment on um, what it's gonna cost to do the work. We requested the $2 million to get us going for the design, the geotechnical investigation of US 89, and that's where that $2 million went. The $1 million that the Transportation Board approved last week was to fund the design and uh, pre-construction um, services of our contractor for N20. This will also be um, eligible for federal emergency relief. ADOT just has to upfront the money and when monies are available they will be, ADOT will be um, reimbursed by federal highways. The, the, 
one thing with the ER fund is the states compete and sometimes wait one, two, sometimes longer for that reimbursement. We have been have a commitment that we will be reimbursed, we just don't have a date. That's what was nice about the $2 million quick release. We did get that money already and, and, and we are working towards that. So it, does that answer the questions on the um, that drove the $1 million and the $2 million? Uh, page 6. Number uh, this in there. It says it will follow the existing N20 alignment. Design speed reduced to allow to follow the existing alignment. Improvements for the many years. 
I believe that it is the responsibility of ADOT to at least put more funding into an alternative route because that two million dollars of sad to say might be just throwing money away. Are we studying the same thing that we're going to find out at the end of the day that that geology there, that the, the area is still unstable? I know at one time, one point in history, the ADOT was pouring concrete and cracks that were happening already in that area. And it was a bottomless pit. And they didn't do anything further. So they acknowledged that there were cracking happening in that route. But yet again, there was no significant movement until now. And I think the biggest bang for the buck here would have been just to put the whole amount of funding into the paving of Route in 20. And the emergency aspect of this should categorize this uh, route as uh, no need for, well, I shouldn't say no need, maybe a, a waiver of all these clearances. It's been done before, where emergency routes, any type of clearances can be waived, so that something can be done on federal land. It's, it's, there's already precedence that's been set, and I always reiterate the building of the border fence. As one example, down in south, through BLM lands, they waived all the requirements to make those routes. So maybe that's something that, that we need to do in order to make it a much more permanent route. So I, I just wanted to say that, and then just, just for the teamwork, I, I've been um, at some of the meetings, and I see the cooperation happening. Um, it's moving a lot quicker than what we anticipated. But, you know, sometimes you have to kind of take a deep breath and realize what the future the plans that you're doing would uh, affect the future of that area. Um, you know, a lot of people go up, and we're at the summer, we're coming into spring and summer. So now we're going to have a lot of boaters coming around our area up in Chanteau Description House. And a lot more tour buses, a lot of us get tired of tour buses through our areas, especially when they speed. And then, not to mention the big truck traffic, 18-wheeler traffic. So we're just uh, acknowledging and recognizing that, that partnership and just keep in mind that the citizens is who we represent and who you all represent as well. Uh, appreciate the partnership that's happening. And uh, I guess just keep us updated. Um, I have yet to have ADOT come to my chapter house to give us a report. I invite ADOT, DIA, well, we already see Rowan over there anyway. Paulson's always over there too, so I guess ADOT come over and, and give us an overview of their plans as well. So, ADOTA, um, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, I just wanted to uh, add that to the discussion. Well, thank you. Um, those are some of the current uh, concerns that we have as far as the Bureau of Indian Affairs. You have a situation where you have 50 vehicles per day traveling that road currently. And once you put this payment in, it will go to 1,500 VMT per day. Putting in a new road also creates other issues as well, which uh, Council Delegate Nez described. You're going to see an increase of truck traffic. You're going to see an increase of Everything that goes along with a new road product, no road. People will are asking for this road, but it also brings other issues as well. So I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Nez. Um, I'll go ahead and defer that uh, question with regards to uh, funding again to the ADOT engineer, uh, Dallas. The, the question on, on the total funding of the project, right now, very preliminary um, estimates of the N20 
are in an area of 15 to 20 million dollars. Where that came up from was an estimate of a structural section of six inches of aggregate base of gravel underneath and then four inches of asphalt, which is comparable to what's on each end of, of the area. We are also looking at adding an overlay on the, the northern or on both ends where there's existing pavement to accommodate the commercial trucks that will be used in the area. A more once we get a designer working, we will have a more refined estimate very quickly. But that's where our 20 million, 15 to 20 million dollars came from, was very quickly looking at our material needs and, and moving forward. Um, there was a question on design speed. One of the um, requirements that we've asked our, our designer to look at is design where possible at posted speed of 55 miles an hour. We realize that some of the curves, especially horizontally, um, will not support that and we'll have to post those lower. We are um, tasking our designer where possible vertical where we can improve sight distance improve some of the vertical alignment and we can stay in the existing footprint where we have clearances that they um, will smoothen out those curves and help support a the posted speed limit. We know traffic doesn't always obey what the sign says. So we want to have a roadway to um, accommodate that 55 miles an hour where possible. And again, we do know that um, that will be a challenge. Um, as, as far as, um, again, addressing the chapters, I will have our folks um, contact each of the chapters in the area. And again, senior staff, myself, the state engineer, and the operations deputy, we will make ourselves available to come out and meet. So I will be making contact with your chapter um, delegate and um, coming out and present to them as well as the other chapters in the area. That's not that the President Shelley, though, I don't just know what it means. It's a story. It's a lot of hard job to have a story. It's a lot of hard job to have a story. It's a lot of hard job to have a story. It's a lot of hard job to have I saw her at Western Agency. I she was a shaman additional. One additional shaman. Two mothers of mine. Double, double, born Nita. Nila, Mr. Kali. Do Mother Nature, do. Even in a coward, the shnib additional, as she and Jitla. A coco. I shall the shark turn Paulson. And Mr. Vicenti. So I don't know what I'm wavering. If this happened of the Navajo Nation, how am I 
much money for Federal Highway or FEMA poured into restoring or even doing a detour. I guarantee you it will be in excess of $100 million, not the peanuts that they're trying to give us, 15 to $20 million. I'm offended by that. I take offense. So, we have the upper hand. Use it. Thank you, Mr. Vice. Have we come up with a second grade, third grade, fourth grade detour? I don't know. I'm going we spend more money on it down the road to upgrade it, to improve the site visit, to improve the curves, to make it more safer. I know it's an emergency uh, project, but it's going to be an unsafe road, though. That's what we're going to end up with. With the amount of traffic that we're anticipated to generate, that we pay that road. The other thing that comes to my mind is, who knows? We might have another uh, slide in there or another uh, movement in there. We might have to shut that 89 again down the road. Who knows? Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm Yeah, Yeah, Madam Chair, committee members and Hengi, Kidal Hengi, Kayaka Siklingi, Shidova, Francisca, Koya, Lip, Lip Mordigay, Shida Shina, Lip Coman Canyon, Dale, the grazing official in Shina, as a son of Shma Tachiki Bashishin, Richie. I failed to see the emergency. I everywhere from Pueblo Pintada, this way to the Crown Point from Ship Rock to Tisna's bus, it paved the own dust. He got a call. This year, on his night, and never caught it here. He gave the gun a year, teens and a chin on Castellan. It's not a short thing, so he laid a teen in dinner. I didn't saw the day from the ship. He had a yard when he chipped down to the enemy. Lago, a young teacher Chinda, you pay go out that she did. In the old cut, I know that from this visit, so she had nothing. Yarmouth and so on, I just had a so. Nana, she did hear Jay, Niki, Jonathan Yaddo, eh? Even Snado, Yarna, he glass at one this visit. She did it work on Annie or the Nana, a picture in Hindley, a 
All in favor of accepting this report? One, two, three, four. Four in favor, zero opposed. Um, we would like to have a meeting with all parties as soon as possible. No late notification, no, no late. Ms. Benali, go home, we don't need you. <laughs> None of that. Hagashila, Nasnana Dalek. <laughs> 